God sent Christ into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God's love endures forever. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with tumult, God's love endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, you despise nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who trust you. Create in us a new and contrite heart that truly repents of our sins, and acknowledges our brokenness, that we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so they could live life to the fullest. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I give up my life for the sheep. 
I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen. I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I received this commandment from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you to observe a holy Lent. Beloved people of God, every year at this time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal Mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance, proclaimed in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Some of us began our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes. This ancient sign speaks of our frailty and the uncertainty of human life and marks the penitence of this community. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, by meditating on God's Word. And now, friends, let us bow before God, our Creator and Redeemer, and confess our sin. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess to you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness. For the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives, have mercy on us, O God. For our self-indulgent appetites and ways of exploitation of other people, have mercy on us, O God. For our anger at our own frustration and our envy at those more fortunate than ourselves, have mercy on us, O God. For our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, have mercy on us, O God. For our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, have mercy, O God. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to justice and cruelty. Have mercy on us, O God. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, have mercy on us, O God. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God of our salvation, 
and show us your steadfast love. Turn to us in your mercy and redeem us.